It's going to be in standard. So the team of Decandio, Stevens, and Grace, you see all on your right. Their team, we have Zan Sayed, Niraj Shukla, and Anurag Das. All players, especially Anurag and Zan, we've seen them have some success on the SCG Tour. Certainly. So yeah, Eldrazi Tron matchup in the mirror. Over on the legacy side, it is Miracles versus Sultai Delver. Uh, that's a match that could go pretty long. Or it could end on turn three with some 2020s, but, you know, we'll find out. I apologize. I was thinking that he was on lands. That's not Miracles. <laughs> I love <laughs> those two decks together because I dislike both of them so much. <laughs> that's the level that I'm on. All right. So underway here, first look into standard here at the top. And Brennan DeCandio almost pulling the first player to three-peat with opens. Three weeks ago, a undefeated day one, and then ran into a, a real snag, ended up with a 1-5 finish on day two. Yeah. Of course, still a great year going for Brennan. Absolutely. He starts on a pair of hissing quagmires tapped. Zan starting with a tune, so from Brennan's side, still could be on a lot of different decks. Yes. Once you see the Oath in this, uh, it becomes less likely that your opponent is casting Aetherworks Marvel. Yeah, and that's actually been an interesting thing over in Standard. A lot of teams going for Aetherworks Marvel decks this weekend. Also less likely that they're casting Electrostatic Pummeler and Bristling Hydra. Oh, I hope someone's on that deck. That deck's just a treat. <laughs> Joe Lissette winning the Invitational with it, or the Players' Championship. Oath of Nissa will find Aether Hub for Xan. And he'll play that, pumping up to three energy. But no threats just yet. Yeah, slow starts from both players here. Yeah, and that's a lot more common for the four-color deck. Uh, for Brennan, his first play is a Rishkar on turn three. And with no two-drop to share counters with, it's not all that impressive. It's certainly not operating at peak performance here. Still a fine play on turn three. You know, three, three that can generate some mana. Potentially could be casting a Verdurous Gear Hulk on the following turn. And on Zan's side, he'll add another Oath. You see, he's playing the, the version of the four-color Sahili deck with a heavy commitment to Oaths, four copies of Oath of Nyssa and three copies of Oath of Chandra to help make those main deck Felidar Guardians feel more like real cards. Oath of Chandra does a good job of cleaning up a lot of the stuff out of the green-black aggressive deck, say a Whiny Constrictor or, you know, this 3-3 Rishkar on the battlefield. Yeah, that part looks pretty nice. He has an Oath of Chandra in his hand as well. Picks up Servant of the Conduit off of his Oath and Nyssa. Another energy creator. Fixes his mana as well. And the Oath of Chandra will shoot down the Legend. So the board still remains empty. Really for both players. For Zan, he has these Oaths waiting to get flickered by a Guardian. And once you for Brennan, when he had another copy of Rishkar and wasn't able to play that unless the first one had died. Still not doing a whole lot on Brennan's side, though. No, he's got these quagmires, which could come up later on in the game, but that's a different game plan than I think he would want to be on. He's, he's not adding a lot of pressure. Mm. And as the game progresses, Zan's deck is capable of just casting Sahili Rai and Felidar Guardian on the same turn. You see for Zan, still a seven-card hand. Yeah, pretty much exclusively been playing cards that replace themselves. He sees he shuffles a rogue refiner toward the front of his hand. <laughs> Might not stop doing that. And there will be the 3 2. So it gives him two energy and draws him a card. Another copy of Oath of Nyssa picked up. And Zan will play the third one. Four mana sources on the battlefield now. Once he gets up to six, that's that scary combo range. Finds an island. So mana working out well for Xan here. He'll have all his basic plus a copy of Ether Hub. But this time, for the first time in the game, Brennan gets to untap with the creature. Mm -hmm. And he knows he doesn't have to leave up removal spells for the combo on this turn, though after this window, he will have to going forward. Yeah, he does have a copy of Grasp of Dark. His hand is a Grasp of Darkness, two Fatal Pushes, a Winding Constrictor, and a Verderous Gear Hulk. So even now, he's got the removal spells, but he's a little choked on different le mm. levels. 
Yeah, the Fatal Push can't be used to break up the combo or deal with the Rogue Refiner. Of course, using Spot Removal and Rogue, Rogue Refiner is generally a pretty bad feeling to begin with. Yeah. Can start applying some pressure, though. And what he's going to do is he's going to use that mana ability off Rishkar to cast Verderous Gear Hulk. There was some value given away here by Brennan. You know, he d is playing a Gear Hulk when he had Winding Constrictor in his hand. But mm -hmm. he'll get us distribute the counters. He's got now a 4-4 Rishkar and a 7-7 Gear Hulk. And he's just repay paying respect to the fact that he's going to need to start leaving up that Grasp of Darkness, lest he potentially mm -hmm. be combo killed. I like the distribution here as well. He made the Rishkar a 4-4. Now it doesn't just get traded in combat with the Rogue Refiner. Yeah, he's got some threats on the board, and now he's going to have to lean on his removal starting next turn. For Zan, draws Sahili Rai. He'll start by playing another Rogue Refiner, drawing a copy of Chandra. And then he, with that, he'll add Servant to the Conduit. So still more cog creatures on the board for Zan. If he wants to get this Verderous Gearhulk off the table in combat, he will need to triple block, which is a dicey situation. I don't think you want to do that in the face of a green-black deck. It's, it's probably got a kill spell. Yeah, odds are pretty high on that. Draw for turn that was from Brennan was Glint Sleeve Siphoner. So now he has a pair of two drops and a trio of removal spells. Yeah, Siphoner's nice. He can use that to start drawing more cards. Once he starts making more land drops, if, he able, if he's able to find something like a Walking Ballista um, to insulate him against the combo, he's in a much more comfortable position at that point in time. Yeah, Ballista's really great because first it stops the combo. It also lets him trigger Revolt at will. By right. And he does have two Fatal Pushes. Mm -hmm. So he's going to swing with the Gear Hulk. Zan's pausing here. It's interesting, he, he might be considering a block, but it's a triple block is so aggressive. If you think that this might get a grasp of darkness out of Decandio's hand, and you're setting up the combo, okay, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. And he'll go ahead and take the seven. If that's true, though, and what I like from what Zan's play is, that might be available to him again next turn. Right. He has some life to play with. 7-7 you know, seven, seven is very large, but it's not lethal. Dicandio is going to go for two drop. It could be the Snake or the Siphoner. He'll go for Winding Constrictor. Yeah, it looks like he'll go with both. Glint Sleeve Siphoner making double energy, thanks to the Winding Constrictor. And Fatal Push on Servant to the Conduit, so shield down for the combo. It needs to be untapped land in both combo pieces, uh, which is what uh, Decandio's hedging against. Zan does have a pretty full grip here, though. I mean, he's played three Oath of Nissas. I, it's not unreasonable that he would have it. I guess actually the hardest part might be the untapped land. Um, Spire Bluff Canal, Botanical Sanctum, they're both four ofs. Yep. But there is an Aether Hub in Zan's hand. And, and if this play works out for Decandio, he's very far ahead on the battlefield now. Yeah, so actually, so you say that, yes, he's taking a big risk here, but the reward is high, too. If he untaps with all this mana, it's really strong. Right. It shouldn't be hard to convert this into some lethal attackers in a couple short turns, uh, assuming that this pays off. And the pace of play here from Zan certainly suggests that this is going to pay off. He's got the untapped land in the Sahili, but it does not look like he has the Felidar Guardian. He can Sahili minus two on Oath of Nyssa, try to find the Guardian, play it, blink the Sahili, and then go for the combo. Yeah, you, you can't copy Oath. Or rather, ro we can use ro Rogue Refiner. So just try right. to hope to hit it right as is. Guardian can Oath, Sahili can't. Yeah. He's going to play Whirler Virtuoso and Aether Hub. Goes all up to 12 energy. So it could have up to four Thopters. Yeah, he's had plenty of energy hanging out here. So this uh, Virtuoso is doing some work, though Decandio, that 7-7 seven, seven Trampler on his side, very significant. Yeah, remember, being able to play Sahelio, I thanks to that copy of Oath of Nyssa in play, does not have to spend any energy. So he'll plus and scry. 12 energy, 3 creatures. Zan 
not going to win this game on size, it doesn't look like. He's trying to kind of fog until he gets the combo put together. Mm -hmm. But starting next turn, uh, Brennan still has that Grasp of Darkness, and he's going to use Glintleaf Siphoner to draw an extra card. And he's got another Verdurous Gear Hulk in his holdings. I think he can maybe just go lethal this turn. A tune will get him a landed three energy, thanks yeah. to the Constrictor. I believe it's going to be shy of lethal. There's a lot of toughness on Zan's side. He can go mighty large, though. Um, yeah, if he can go, if he can make a big enough play to get the Sahili Rai off the table, that certainly seems like a good spot for Brennan. Mm -hmm. So Brennan will make the fifth land drop. It's the land he got off a tune. He has two kill spells to shield himself and a gear hulk to put down more pressure in his hand. Boards a 7-7, seven, 4-4. Seven, four, four. And two, those pair of two drops from last turn, they're, which aren't really safe to attack, but they're giving him a lot of incremental value. Right. He faded the Felidar Guardian on the previous turn. Yeah, he knows it's not there. He would have lost. But Zan has some materials to try to produce it on the following turn. Yeah, Zan scryed to the bottom with Sahili, so he shouldn't. He's not worried that it's that it's there just yet. Mm -hmm. Swings with both creatures. First thing, Todd Stevens still not losing with Eldrazi Tron. This time's a mirror, but he still gets game one over Niraj Shukla. And Zan not making any blocks. That's the Healy is going to hit the bin. Looks like he's going to go for some Encept Thopters, though. Could make anywhere from one to four of them. So one, make that two. And he actually has a pretty reasonable clock here. He has the two Rogue Refiners, the Virtuoso, and now those Thopters. I think he might be able to just race back. Draws Harnessed Lightning. That certainly helps the cause. He still has six energy hanging out. You can kill a Gear Hulk with it. It's pretty gross. Has another Sahili Rai in hand can copy the Rogue Refiner with that one. Sure. Add three more power to this attack. He's going to be shy of making a lethal attack on this turn, but he can make a very significant push. So he's going to start with Chandra Torch of Defiance. It's one of his two Planeswalkers. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether or not how much Zan plays for the combo and how much he plays for the damage race. Mm -hmm. It's a minus three from Chandra. He's going to kill Glint Sleeve Siphoner. So he's trying to deny Brennan extra cards right now. Right. Looks like a swing in the air for what might be only one. But Brennan's got some good shielding. He still has, like I said, the double kill spell to defend himself, and a Gear Hulk to try to press for a win. He also has a Hissing Quagmire hanging out in his lands. You know, currently, he has 11 power otherwise. So that Quagmire plus the other creatures would be lethal if Zan were to shove too aggressively. Uh, so um, Zan holding back here, definitely paying off. On end step, Brennan's going to use his Fatal Push on the Whirler Virtuoso. Now, because the Clint Steve Siphoner died, Revolt is enabled. Zan will respond by attempting to harness lightning the Verderous Gear Hulk. And going for the Fatal Push now forces Zan to make as many Thopters as he's going to make, so Brendan will have that information going into combat on his turn. Yeah, and this shows why Zan held off on six energy, so that if he drew Harness Lightning, he would still have enough to kill the Gear Hulk. Yep. It was just the right-sized stockpile. And then Brennan uses his last removal spell, Grasp of Darkness, on the Rogue Refiner. It looks like he has changed gears now. Draws Grasp of Darkness, Green Gear Hulk in hand. This is an interesting turn here from Brennan. An unfortunate 
element of this combat is the non-Gearhulk creatures do not themselves have trample. You can generate right. a lot of power here. Yeah, he's gonna play. He's just gonna tap out. Play the green gear Hulk. Decide to die to the combo if Zan can produce it. So plays murderous gear Hulk. Winding constrictors in play. So all the creatures are gonna get an extra counter. And this turn, his board just wasn't established enough to win and leave the combo up. On this turn, he just has to tap out. You know, if he just leaves up a removal spell, then he's, he doesn't have that great of a board presence. So it was one counter, two counters on the Gear Hulk, one on everybody else, and then each of them added up one. So Constrictor, now a 4-5. Rishkar, now a 7-7. Seven, seven. They will swing in. That's 11 possible damage. And none of those are going at Chandra. Those are going at Zan. Chandra at one is not the most threatening thing. Take a couple turns before that can... Yeah. It doesn't even kill any of these creatures if it gets up to three loyalty. And Zan's now chump blocking. So Zan's last card in hand is Sahili Rai. If between that Chandra and his draw, he can find Felidar Guardian, he can grab this one. And well. there he goes. Boom. Two cards, and he hits it on the draw step. So game one to Zan Sayed. And, you know, I actually, going back... Zan, that was kind of the game plan all along, right? He felt like he was using his value creatures to fog his way till he hit the combo. Mm -hmm. Now, it gets extra dramatic when he, he hits it the turn after he chumps his board away. And his deck, most of the spells that he's casting, they end up replacing themselves. Sure. He had some windows to be more aggressive, but he was never really in a position where he was realistically winning the damage race. His deck set up to combo, and that's what he did. All right, so we're going to go look at the sideboards between the players. Uh, I'm going to start on Brennan DeCandio's side. He had did a lot of things right in the matchup, but his pressure was, I feel like his pressure didn't come online until way too late. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, he really didn't start attacking till turn five. He's got three Transgress the Mind, two Life Crafters Beast Jerry, two Murder, two Natural Obsolescence, a pair of Obnixilis, a pair of Tyler's Tracker, a Ruinous Path, and a Sky Sovereign. These are a lot of very big, heavy hitters. Yep. I like Transgress the Mind quite a lot. You can break up some of these value engines, see whether or not Xan has access to the combo, and even break that up. Yeah, Murder is it, another instant speed way to break it up as well. Yeah, Transgress hits just about everything in the four-color deck, which seems pretty great. Yep. There's a strong enough argument for Ruinous Path. There's a decent number of Planeswalkers. It's pretty bad against a lot of the creatures that are out there, but you kind of want to make sure you have enough access to Sahili Rai so Xan can't just cast Sahili and threaten the combo on turn four. So you can board into those. Sky Sovereign also cleans up a lot of the creatures that Zan's casting. Yeah, does he want something like Tireless Tracker to kind of compete on the value engine here? It makes sense to me. All right, Zan's side, he's got three interesting sideboard plans. Three Fevered Vision, three Negate. Um, two Barrels Expertise, Dispels, Natural States, Shock, and Release the Gremlins. Um, I'm not sure if any of those are for this matchup. The one card that I like quite a lot is the Barrels Expertise. You have this kind of mid-rangey, aggressive deck. Just return their creatures to their hand, cast a spell for free. That, that seems like a reasonable tempo play here. Yeah, we did see that when Brennan had to, did not have a board established, it was really hard for him to play the game. Yep. All right, so they are now at one game in Zan's side. In the middle seat in Modern is Todd Stevens up a game. Tan and Greats and Anurag Das still on game one in Legacy, which you have to think might be kind of good for Anurag. He is playing Miracles. Yeah. But we're going to take a second. In We are now just over one month away from Grand Prix Orlando. It's the next Grand Prix offered by Star City Games, and it's going to be in Etherable Limited. On March 24th through the 26th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Orlando. Register by February 24th for the Kaladesh Ether Revolt Limited format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Scrapper Champion. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price while also walking away with the exclusive Scrapper Champion playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix Trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Scrapper Champion playmat. Prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander package to play in four Commander On Demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard Boulder deck case. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Orlando's many special guests, including cosplayer Vanessa Martin and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Vulcan Baga. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Orlando today. Well, that's Grand Prix Orlando, March 24th through 26th. And Ryan, during that break, 
I know. The 25 minute legacy game, the Miracles player won it. Boo. It's, I'm shocked. That almost that, that deck almost never wins long games. <laughs> so now what we have is for, you know, for our very dressed up gentlemen. Todd Stevens is still undefeated on the day, and he's still undefeated, but his teammates are making that harder and harder for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is going to have to step up and help him. So uh, something occurred to me right before we cut away about Barrel's expertise in this matchup. One of Brennan's answers to the combo is just having a walking blist on the battlefield. Okay. Returning that to hand and casting Zaheeli seems mighty nice. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> it's called <laughs> technology. Yeah. Well, it can, get, it can get a four drop into play, right? So we could get either part of the combo? Yeah. I mean, I just said it's a Healy ride. It doesn't have, sure. to, it doesn't have to I get it. I mean, it could be anything. You could put Chandra into play. <laughs> Whatever. You could put a Rogue Refiner into play. You could cast Release the Gremlins. But I wouldn't do that one. Yeah. In case you're wondering why there might be on the shuffling, uh, confirming deck size here. Zan had a miscount on it. Making sure he's actually presenting a 60 card deck. That is important. Well, this is like, th there was this thing in the Magic community where people started talking about, you know, why do you pile shuffle? It's not good shuffling. And the answer is you, you do it to make sure you have a 60 card deck. You're, you're just, it's like a fanciful way of counting your deck. I pile shuffle every time I drop a card. Generally, I just yeah, kind of count my sideboard. You're, you're, well, it's like you're, count, you're pile counting, right? The idea, yeah. the idea is you're saying, am I going to get to 60 here? And you look at the sideboard and say, is this 15? It's just so boring and inefficient that I try not to do well, it. Well, it's not a shuffle. It's just counting. Exactly. But we do it for that reason, because that, that's one of those times where Zan did not hit 60. That's a problem. And you're like, oh, hey, I'm glad I did this. Right. To me, it makes more sense to pile shuffle your opponent's deck than your own. Oh wow! You want to? Well, that, that's hey. so. You're, okay. If they're yeah, presenting, yeah. if they're presenting a 59 card deck, you don't uh. want to. You can't just let that slide. I don't are do it. Are you one of those guys? I don't do it. Guys again. Every round, pile shuffles your opponent's I deck. I established that I think it's very boring, and I don't do it. I'm just saying it makes more sense to count the other player's deck. That is true. Don't be the guy who pile shuffles your opponent's deck every <laughs> every game. Or your own deck. <laughs> or you're, Just don't do it at all. It's it's not. Yeah. You can count your sideboard. That one's easy. Yeah, that's what I do every time. Yeah, you make sure that you're right. boarded correctly as well. Game number two, Brennan DeCandio on the play. Once again, starting out on some quagmires. Unlike last game, he looks like he actually will have a play a two drop. That's a step up. Yeah. But not until turn three, as both his lands are tap lands. Second Quagmire and a tune is the play. It matters more to get on the battlefield bigger than it necessarily does faster, as long as you present ways to interrupt the combo. It's like as long as you're spending your mana, it's probably fine. You yeah. don't want to leave mana on the table. Right. But yeah, if he had a two drop, it would have, yes, Zan would be at 18. Mm. That would be it. Life yeah. would move on. You need to be able to attack into Rogue Refiner. And we go back over to Brennan. He's got another. Got some options. Looks like has some lands, multiple gear hulks. Constrictor, walking ballista. He's got a lot of good stuff hanging out here. Yeah, and he's going to go with tireless tracker. It might not the most impactful one, but it certainly is the most mana efficient option. Yep, uses all his mana this turn. And the following turn, he can cast constrictor plus ballista. Right. So just good. And that really showing. Yeah, he's. It's not. It's not exactly the timing he's worried about of each of his cards. He wants to make sure that he just is as efficient as he can get as much stuff out as possible. Yep. And from Zan, his servant ramps him into a four drop, Felidar Guardian, which will flicker the Oath of Nyssa. Now, an interesting thing that's happening with Zan is look at his lands for a second. He's got two ether hubs and a basic mountain. Doesn't stop him from being able to cast this Sahili Rai off of that Oath of Nyssa. But yeah, yeah he, uh, energy is kind of a choking point right now. Right. I mean, you're right that now Brennan's got to be concerned. The fact that Felidar Guardian just found Sahili Rai is going to change how Brennan plays the whole game. Right. 
He can still just cast the Walking Ballista on this turn. He yeah. will be insulated from the combo by doing that. So Winding Constrictor plays Ether Hub, gets two energy and a clue, attacks. I would not block. No, he'll pump if you do. Yeah, takes three. And yes, he actually can tap out for this Walking Ballista on two. Now let's see if Zan can produce a... Doesn't a Harnessed Lightning plus land just kill him? That looks mighty good. Right, Harness Lightning. If you Harness Lightning the Ballista. Maybe Barrel's Expertise. Which is in his hand. But I don't know if he can cast it. That's going to be tough. He's going to need a blue source or something to make more energy first. Yeah. That's going to be tough. Another Ether Hub. That would do it. It's just the world's most punishing mana base. Just, just hanging on. <laughs> The, yeah, there is it, a cost to putting four colors of mana in your deck. If his mana was better, he would win this turn, but it is not. Another servant of the conduit then is going to be the play. That's far less punishing. And if Brennan does something, well, actually, if he casts Verderous Gear Hulk, he can get the Ballista to the point where it can just shoot down the Felidar Guardian. Well, so he, just, he could just tap four mana and do that. Right. Yeah, Brennan going into his next turn, he should be able to be protected even from the Baral's expertise. Yeah, this was the window for Xan, and it was a pretty big one, but his deck did not show up. There was a lot, especially with that Celia Ryan hand, it, there was not a lot of defense for Brennan. You know, a Harness Lightning would have done it, a Barrel's expertise would have done it. But now, now things are going to get tougher. Brennan's going to go with the tune for another land. The window here is closing. And it's like Brennan picked up a long tusk cub. He can kind of do whatever he wants on this turn. The way that he can lose this game is by using his resources to do something other than adding counters to the walking ballista which would enable Zan to win the game with that Barrel's Expertise. His hand, two green gear hulks and a long tusk cub. So really that Walking Ballista is his only form of insurance against the combo. So Barrel's Expertise, you mentioned it. Zan could win through that if Brennan is not careful. Yes. If Brennan plays anything here, he will be dead on the untap. He does have cl two clues, so it, it just kind of makes sense to sit on this four mana to either charge at the Ballista or to start cracking clues. Mm -hmm. But if you say cast Long Tusk Cub... Then, then he's in a bunch of trouble. In the middle match, Nira Shukla, Zan's teammate, evens things up with Todd Stevens. 1-1 mm, one, one in the mirror match, eh? That Sounds checks out. Right. That checks out. Brennan's got a, a tough road here. He's he's in control of the board, but it's it's a pretty tenuous one. You see Harness Lightning in Zan's hand. I, I I'm a little surprised. So Harness Lightning right here. I would have thought Zan should do this main phase. Then then uh, Brennan wouldn't have any mana to be activating his ballista. Just like main phase, shoot the ballista, go. Mm -hmm. See now he makes the ballista up to a four four. Right, which could now kill the Felidar Guardian. Exactly. And Brennan's going to do just that. Yeah, now go Zan's back, yeah. Uh, in a little bit of trouble. So you go back over to Zan. He draws a tune. Zan's going to use an energy officer of the conduit, it looks like, to cast a tune. Well, that'll help his mana woes. He gets a basic island, setting up his Barrel's Expertise. But Barrel's Expertise now doesn't win him the game. Because in response, Brennan can shoot down the Felidar Guardian. Right. It really just slows things down. It would cause Decandio to use all of the counters and actually put the Ballista in the graveyard, which is not nothing. No, and I think Brent Zan's going to force that play. So here's Barrel's Expertise. We'll see what the targets are. Targets a clue <laughs> and the sure. two creatures. Well, makes sense to me. This card's really good in this matchup. 
So return them, and Brennan knows that there's a Sahili Ryan Zan's hand. So Brennan's play hand plays are pretty forced here, right? Yes. Yeah. He kills the Felder Guardian. Doesn't want to lose the game. Now the other two things are bounced. Zan puts another Felder Guardian into play. Flickers Oath of Nyssa. That seems pretty great. Yep. Oath of Nyssa will find him a land. A couple Harness Lightning going to the bottom here. And now Zan once again is threatening the combo. Tireless Track, Brennan's hand, Tireless Tracker, Long Tusk Cub, two green gear hooks. He is dead on board to the combo. This. Draws Long Tusk Cub. So, so Brennan, if Zan just shoves the Sahili Riot, this game's over. Yeah, Brennan uh, would need to crack a clue to try to find Grasp of Darkness. Well, he's got to represent it. He'll play Tireless Tracker, but does Zan believe it? Yeah, we'll find out. It seems pretty free right here for him to try. What worst case scenario is, is that Brennan uses a kill spell on your 1-4. That's, we can manage that. He's not doing a whole lot else. It is true, though, that he would likely be able to maintain the Sahili for a couple of turns, uh, given that Brennan just has the tireless tracker hanging out on the battlefield. And this is one of the things where it's so hard. So what Brennan has to do is you have to watch his face here. He's got, you see them just being stoked there. Brennan is dead, he knows it, and he's got to make sure that Zan doesn't know that that's the situation. Right. And like, this is a very tough situation. You know, mm -hmm. I am dead, please don't kill me. And Zan picked up another land for the turn, so he kind of had two lands in hand, and if he doesn't have too much else going on, he's kind of forced to go for it here. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. If Zan's hand is bad, then he just will go for the combo because he's got no other plays. Here's Sahili Rai. It looks like Zan has made the right read. Was Brennan able to sell it? No. Copy spelled our guardian. Zan makes the play. Brennan doesn't have the grasp. And what a read from Zan Sayed. Deciding to go for this in the face of removal, figured, calls Brennan on it, and calls the bluff. So that is going to be game and match 2-0. Zan Sayed gets the first match for his team. Still more magic happening here, though. Given the fact that Tan and Grace has not yet won game two, I imagine no. that's a precarious situation. Probably a little bit uh, deep into this game two at this point. So the team of Sayed, Shukla, and Das now gets the first match, which means it's going to be on Todd Stevens and Tan and Grace to pull this one out. I'll be bringing you back into the booth. It looks like we're going to move over to playing some Legacy then. So this is Tan the Tan and Grace writing that on his deck list himself. Yeah. Uh, versus Anurag Das. Uh, now, Das is on Miracles to Tannen's Sultai Delver. Now, you're the Delver player here. Tell me, walk me through some of this matchup. Tannen's down a game, too. Tannen likes this matchup a lot, and the big incentive to be the Sultai build is Abrupt Decay. So he has answers to counterbalance. Okay, so he can't. he's not going to get locked out of the game as easily. Exactly. Uh, of the Delver decks, this is the best build against Miracles. All right. So that's true, but they... The other part, though, is that this is generally a matchup that Miracles is looking for. Yes. Right. Just a deck with creatures. Cast Terminus, cast Swords to Plowshares. You can stop the Delver deck from winning long enough to start executing your own okay. game plan. We're going to walk, jump into the match here, but apparently what we have is actually, yeah, at the same time as the Brennan DeCanio match lost, um, we actually also have Tan and Grace falling two games to zero to Anurag Das. So it is the team of Dask, Shukla,